thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be here again tonight. I was with many of you folks here a couple of years ago. I'm Clark Barnes. I'm a state senator. I represent the 15th Senatorial District, which is the largest uh, geographical state senate district east of the Mississippi. Uh, it runs from uh, almost uh, Interstate 79 and this uh, middle of the state over to Interstate 81. Uh, near Martinsburg, across nine counties, drops down into Pocahontas County, almost to Lewisburg. Uh, it's a huge chunk of West Virginia. It's a beautiful part of the state. Uh, I love it. It takes me about four hours to get from one end of my district to the other. It's easier for me to get to Parkersburg from where I live than it is to get to the other end of uh, the district, mainly because we got good roads between here and there. Uh, there are about eight mountains between uh, Elkins, my home, and the uh, the Martinsburg area. Uh, but uh, it is truly a pleasure to be here and I will tell you this, uh, I am a capitalist. Uh, I believe in capitalism and I believe in opportunity. And uh, I think it's the right of every American to seek out uh, opportunity, whether or not it is uh, educational opportunity or economic opportunity. We all have that opportunity and that is guaranteed in the Constitution of the United States. I uh, I want to I want to just uh, start and and hopefully I won't even take ten minutes because I have a feeling you guys would rather ask questions and us talk about things that you want to talk about but uh, just uh, just to get started as a legislator uh, I want to tell you that uh, you know uh, Mitch Carmichael's here another legislator he was he was uh, there when doctors were leaving the, the state you remember that and. Uh, the legislature went to work past medical malpractice reform. Med medical malpractice changed the scope of things in West Virginia and as a result of that we have now more applications for physicians in West Virginia than we have in history. There was a time when insurance companies were leaving the state. About seven years ago you remember you couldn't even get an insurance quote if you didn't like your insurance company. They wouldn't take you. State Farm, Nationwide, Allstate, they were all shut down. Your legislature went to work again and, and enacted some tort reform and it changed the scope of insurance and the insurance companies came back. Uh, there was a time when businesses were leaving the state uh, because of a bankrupt state-run workers' compensation system that had us $3.3 billion in debt and your legislature went to work. and. Uh, privatized workers' compensation. In seven years' time, we've reduced that deficit from 3.3 billion to 1.1 billion. It's gone down by two thirds. So, folks, there have been some positive aspects of uh, of the legislature and and people buckling down and going to work and doing things that needed to be done. Now, I'll tell you this as a Republican. I know that this is not a partisan group, but I'm a Republican and I'm proud of being a Republican. But uh, every one of those things that I just told you about that the legislature accomplished was in the Republican Party platform of 2003. And I'll tell you what, if us Republicans had been in charge of the, of the legislature, we would have gone a lot farther. And we probably wouldn't be where we are today because we would have tackled a lot of problems. We have, uh, we have uh, uh, something that's, uh, that is uh, a potential for a crisis on our hands in West Virginia, and that's called the OPEP liability, uh, which are other post-employment benefits for West Virginia uh, retired employees. Uh, they were uh, they were given many many years ago, and uh, you know, no one really looked ahead to see what it was going to cost us somewhere down the the road. But right now we're somewhere between seven billion and eleven billion dollars in debt. Uh, because of that and uh, you know it wasn't even mentioned until two years ago when the accounting systems of this country said you got to start putting it on your books instead of ignoring it and so now every school board every county commission in the state of West Virginia has to actually say yes we owe that money but there is something we have to be careful of because you know we had Governor Manchin that came in here uh, with us seven years ago and that that workers compensation liability he wanted to bond it. Well, when you bond an unfunded liability that's long term, instead of an unfunded liability, it becomes an immediate debt. <coughs> and that's a problem. And we have to be careful because the powers that be sometimes get in bed with the folks up in New York City. 
and they're going to be trying to bond this OPEB liability, and then instead of a long-term liability that we can address as we need to, it becomes an immediate debt, and then we're paying interest on it. So we have to be careful as we, as we move ahead. We've got a lot of things to do. Uh, as a legislator, uh, we need more tort reform. We've been called the judicial hellhole. You guys have heard that. I introduced five pieces of legislation, which were very important legislation to additional tort reform for West Virginia. It would have made a difference in insurance premiums, would have made a difference in whether or not we had good, affordable health care in this state. Would have made a lot of difference to a lot of people. But our Democrat leadership in the state of West Virginia elected not even to consider and put on the agenda even one piece of that legislation that would have made a difference for every West Virginian. I also, I also uh, introduced this year something uh, known as the Arizona Immigration Law. But do you think our Democrat legislators would take that up? They didn't touch it, not at all. So we've got lots of good ideas, and we've been in there. There's some of us that have been in the trenches, and I understand that it's awfully easy to cast stones at what your legislators do. And certainly, when you look at this past session, there's a lot to cast stones about. But there's some of us that have been there for you all the time. And we've been doing what you sent us to do. We haven't been buckling to corporate interests. We haven't been buckling uh, to individual interests. We have been doing the work of the people who sent us. Now, not necessarily a lot of us, but there's some of us. Have we made mistakes along the way? You betcha. You know, I wouldn't say that my voting record is perfect because sometimes in retrospect, we can look back and say, hmm, you know, that's not quite what I understood. But it happens that way. We're human. We don't know it all. We don't have the solutions. But with your help, you bring the solutions to us, whether it's education, whether it's tort reform, whether it's the, the, simply the things that we do every day in our ordinary lives. We're expecting your help to do that. And don't call us and tell us after the fact what we should have done. Watch what we're doing right now and call us and say, hey, wait a minute. I want to give you a warning. There's something coming up. About 2,000 bills were introduced this year. 2,000. Over 2,000. Did we read the legislation? <laughs> of course not. There weren't enough hours in the day if we just stayed up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the entire 60 days of the legislature to read the legislation and every bill that was introduced. But I can guarantee you that the ones that came before us, we did our dead level best. At least the two of us that are here tonight to read and to understand what we were voting on. Now, probably next week we'll find out something that kind of snuck in on us. But I'll be honest with you, that happens. But folks, uh, you know, there's, there's a real diversity. And, and the economy, you know, I came from, I graduated from high school upriver here in Payton City. Uh, we had a whole graduating class of 50 when I graduated. Uh, last year they graduated 12. Well, you know, that's kind of the story of our small Ohio Valley towns, isn't it? So the, the challenges that we have, the industry that we have, uh, or had, I should say, we've got to change things in America, not just West Virginia, so that we can introduce uh, opportunity. That's the number one thing that uh, I, I think the governor has to focus on, is economic opportunity. Number one under that is jobs. What does it take to create jobs? It takes businesses who make money. That's the fundamental aspect of capitalism. Yeah. That's the only way that we support our government. The only way that we, could, we can have the state of West Virginia, that we can have roads, that we can have bridges, that we can have a public welfare system to take care of those people. The only way that we can take care of the people that are out of work is for businesses to make money, pay taxes, create jobs who pay taxes, all right? But let's make sure that taxation is reasonable. There's the key. And let's make sure the government doesn't waste what we give them. Yeah. 
Because right now we've got overlapping oh. agencies. There goes my siren. <laughs> 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 <laughs>